Welcome everybody to another session of Agent Mastermind and the Real Estate Animals. I, uh, I'm excited as ever to be here with you guys as always to share a little bit of time with you each week and take what you have available to you and find a way to incorporate it and interact, engage with all of this stuff that's going on because it's changing every single day. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, I mean every day I wake up like last week I did a presentation about Pinterest and the day that I did it was a day after there was a drastic change where you don't need to be invited anymore. <laughs> and, and if you I mean, don't think social media or, or that's not big news, every right? local station – and then I was watching CNN, and they had a segment. I mean it was only a 30-second segment, but they had a, a segment on CNN about the fact that you no longer have to be invited to be a member of Pinterest. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So everybody thought I was ahead of the curve, but I was a, I was a day late. It was like getting the newspaper on Thursday, and it happens on Wednesday. You know, it's just uh, crazy. So all right. So what we're going to talk about the new communication device. Everybody knows what this is. Of course, this is an iPhone. I have a Droid, but they're saying October now. Hate to push you back on the new iPhone, but this is where people do most of their research. Believe it or not, I don't know about you guys, but and there was a, I think Jimmy Fallon had it the other day where. It's not about you know. It's not about knowing anything anymore. And they they're talking about how it's almost making people so they're not as smart because we can Google everything. We're sitting around the campfire, <laughs> and somebody asks a question about something, and I I mean in thirty seconds I have the answer to it, no matter what the question is. Like who sang a song in nineteen sixty two? Who 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 wrote this? Who think you know? I mean whatever it is, I I come up with you know different questions we have around the campfire. So all kinds of really cool stuff are going on. But more importantly, believe it or not, people are searching you and who you are and what you do for a living and how you as an agent can help them sell their home and get more exposure, of course, and how, you gonna, how are you going to attract more buyers. So that's pretty scary. So let's, let's just talk about this a little bit. The agenda, five keys to real estate agents should, the five reasons a real estate agent should have a blog or a website, direct communication, positive uh, positioning yourself as an expert lead generation, competitive differentiation, relationship marketing, changing with the times. And that's probably the biggest one of the whole thing is changing with the times. Who is your audience and likely clients? How to get started? What to blog about? When to blog and often and how often? And six ways to keep up with blogging. I'm going to give you, Paul, I think no less than, oh my God, I think I got probably no less than a thousand different things you can blog about. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but there's 365 days in a year, so you got two years worth. How about that, right? And that's not even talking about the changes that happen every single day of every life. So the biggest question of this whole call, seriously, is are you your own business? Are you your own dot-com company? Now, real quick, does everybody, just, to, just to, before I go any farther, can everybody see my screen? Oh, can uh, close my message box. Can everybody see my screen okay? And uh, also, there's a little question box. Now. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure everybody's uh So let me ask you this. Everybody's saying yes, they can see my screen. Put yes in there if you are your own business or you work, I mean, yes, you work for somebody else, but do you consider yourself as your own business? That's a big question you need to ask yourself. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So a lot of yes is coming in. Good. So that's what we're going to focus on today is creating a brand for yourself, but having it so that... When you leave a company, if you ever do, and you may be there forever, that's great. If you own the company, that's even better, so you should brand the company. But when you leave, are you branding yourself so that you just change a logo no one ever knows? Or are you losing everything? Because there's so many agents that I work with, when I meet with them and they've just changed a company, they literally have nothing. Have you heard that ever before, Paul? Yeah. Same with a loan officer. If there's any loan officers on the call, hey. this is a really good class. This is probably the most important thing is... Let's talk about yourself. So where we're going to end up, and this is, again, part one of, of two or maybe even three, but this is where we're going to end up is this is a website that we put together for a real estate agent, and he's got about Fred, contact, find us, foreclosures, property search, why Fred. He's got his listing presentation in there. He's got a property search here. He's got his social media on it. He's got you know his philosophy and stuff like that. So we're going to focus on, one, how to do a killer header for your, for your website or blog, how to do this stuff for yourself, not, not how to get charged $1,500. I just talked to a, a team of agents. $1,500, they're getting charged for what I'm going to show you right here. Now, will it have some stuff that is worth 
I'm going to answer it and say absolutely not because I know better. All right? So you don't have to spend any money or that much money on this thing. So number one question that everybody asks, and this is an elevator speech, you should have not only an elevator speech, but you should have a good bio of what you do. Who am I and what qualifies me? If somebody asks you that in an elevator, can you respond in a manner that is sufficient to hopefully build a deep relationship with that person right off the bat that goes, man, this person really cares about what they do or they really are passionate about what they do, that's something you should think about. You should put some and time a, into that and be able to answer that. And doing it in a, a short, concise in a short and concise way, seconds. one of the things that I teach on is, is how to put together a good 30-second elevator speech. You, yeah. should, you, should be able to, you should be able to give somebody a good idea of who you are, what makes you different, and what you do in a very short, concise period of time. To put that yeah. together, you simply sit down and put ideas to paper. And then you start eliminating things that are, that are not necessary or that are reiterations of something you've already said. And before you know it, you've got a good – Scott, I love your 30-second elevator speech because it's, it's, it's something that's ever-evolving. But you know it like the back of your hand, and you can right. deliver it without even batting an eye when somebody asks you who you are and what you do. Correct. You want your blog site or your website, which is what you're talking about, you want to be able to develop or say the same thing to a potential viewer. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you want to be able to not, not like come out like, oh, well, well, you know, you don't want to hesitate because that's a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to make sure and tell them exactly what you do that's going to connect with them. Now, is it going to connect with everybody? No. Do you care about that it connects with everybody? Not really, but you want to connect with the majority, right? You want to connect with the most of the people that you meet at a party, which, you know, remember we talked about this, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and, and Pinterest, there's a party going on right now. What is your elevator speech? Are you sharing it with the world on a daily basis so that they get to know you, like you, and eventually trust you, okay? So this is our goal. With all this stuff that we've done, we've done Pinterest, we've done Facebook, we, um, we really haven't tackled LinkedIn. We're going to have to do LinkedIn eventually, but Facebook, LinkedIn, we've you know, tapped on Twitter a little bit, we've talked about LinkedIn, but when people search for you on their phone, on their computer, are you coming up first on Google? Do you own the first page? Do you own the first page in a bunch of different areas, like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all that stuff? Do you own it on Yahoo? Do you, you don't know which browser they use. Do you own it on Bing? You need to make sure that you own, and you should Google your name to find out what's coming up, because if they see your name on a sign, they could possibly pick up their phone and go, hmm, I wonder who she is. Google her, check it out. I do it all the time just to see. And it's quite interesting. There's another one that you can go to. It's called 123people.com. And Google yourself and see what comes up. That shows you all your websites, all the different e – I mean, oh, there's so much stuff. So 123people.com, uh, that's another place to find out kind of where you're at in the social media realm and, and the, the website realm, okay? So let's talk a little bit, a bit, Paul, about the difference between a blog versus a website. Because I always say – and it's like people cringe when I go, yeah, do you have a blog or do you have a website? I'm like, ooh. I would definitely never have a blog because I just there's no way I could blog every single day. Okay, no big deal. But in in all reality, I mean, this is blog is a type of website. It's called the web log equals blog. That's why they put it together. Website is a general term. It's site on web, which is a website. So they kind of flip it around. They flip, flip, flipped it around. I don't know why they didn't call it a site web or whatever. This website sounds better, right? There are a few technical differences as to how the data is presented to the readers. A blog. A blend of the term web blog is a type of website or part of a website supposed to be updated with new content from time to time. Now, I didn't say every day here. I said time to time, right? Now, there's other certain kinds of blogs that we're going to show you, which is called a static blog as well, where the front never changes, which is more or less like a website, all right? And then there's a post. Every post has its own static page, have its own static page, as the URL suggests. But the main page of the blog is dedicated to the series of latest posts in reverse chronological order, latest to oldest order, all right? So, in case, I mean, some of you guys are probably experts on this stuff. I just want to break it down really, really basic and go, why, you know, why does this all make sense or why should I have one, okay? The major difference between a blog and a static website. A website is nothing more than a static website. Static means that it never changes. So every time you go to scotthutspeth.com, it's going to look the same today as it does six months from now unless I change my template, unless I change something on the front end. Now, a blog a couple times a week is going to change depending on the article that I write. And the thing I like about the articles is you can, you can refresh your content. You can talk about 
the HARP program that's coming out. You can talk about foreclosures. You can talk about short sales. You can talk about credit repair. You can talk about a new listing that has an in-ground pool. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. You can change and refresh the content where a static website just is that's what it is and that's what's going to stay. And the little spiders are going to see it as, as, as it is. But if there's a ton of raving content, like the, like the Olympics the last two weeks has been just going crazy, right? People are searching about the content. They're searching about Michael Phelps. They're searching about the Fab Five gymnastics ladies. I mean, they're just amazing. So all that stuff is relevant content. If you're writing about that stuff or copying someone else's post or just putting your thoughts down in words and putting it in your blog, people will come to your blog and read relevant or fresh content that you feel or have an opinion on. Does that make sense, Paul? Absolutely. Okay. So it's a real big deal here. So let's summarize a blog. Blogs provide commenting, uh, commenting system. So people can, like, like when you put a post out there, kind of like Facebook, they can comment on it, right? It's updated almost daily or weekly, whatever, whatever you decide. Some people I know for a fact have people that just run their blogs for them. So it's done automatically. They, don't, they never have to do it. They just it's automatically goes to your blog, and then the blog, once the blog post is done, it automatically goes to Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and, and now they're even putting it on Pinterest as well. Articles appearing in reverse chronological order, freshest to new, you know what I mean? So the freshest content is first. You're not reading a post from 2010. You're reading a post from today. Make sense? Absolutely. Frequently crawled, frequently craw uh, crawled by search engines. So like every time there's some relevant content, video is relevant content depending on what it is. Like a video that has something to do with Kalamazoo. If I'm saying, hey, I'm your out-of-the-box real estate expert right here in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I want to share with you something that you can do to uh, help you to get more exposure for your home in Kalamazoo. For somehow, YouTube has a way of recognizing what is said. They have, they have readers, so they put that. If someone searches Kalamazoo real estate or Kalamazoo buying a home in Kalamazoo, you might have a chance of coming up. But if you're not writing about that stuff or doing videos on that stuff, there's no way it's going to come up, right? Often covers of a wide variety of articles. You can cover anything from... Oh my God! Any, I mean, all spectacles of the earth. Remember last week I talked about the three things. If I had to ask you a question, the three things that like make who you are up. Like it's I like horseback riding. I like um, you know home decor. I like decorating. I love to go in and just help a seller like get rid of the clutter and put stuff where I think a buyer would like it more so than what it is right now. Whatever that is. A blog lets you create who you are, your persona, your image, your brand, and let it out there to the world, right? And people can comment on it. They can follow you and all that kind of stuff. More like newspapers covering a vast majority of topics. Newspapers, every, every time you get them, there's new articles, right? Same thing. It's up-to-date, new, current, fresh. So buyers and sellers, how do they connect? You know, why a blog? Branding, communication, become the recognized expert. This is a big one. That's if huge. If you're out there posting on different topics that have to do with buying and selling a home, and you are become the expert. Absolutely. You the expert. Absolutely. Search engine rankings. This is huge. We post. Pro we blog properties all the time. We call it property blogging. But that comes. I mean, within 24 to 48 hours, four bedroom home in Kalamazoo, Michigan, shows up first page of Google. Reach new customers. People are always looking for you. People are. They don't know they're looking for you. But they are. They're, they're out there Googling, just like you do. You Google for certain stuff. If they're Googling for homes or trying to get approved or I need to, you know, I want to I get a mortgage. Like, if you're not out there posting about this stuff, there's no way in heck they're going to find you, right? Unless they're playing around on a social media site and they get introduced by, to you by a friend of a friend of a friend or a cousin or uncle or whatever. Scotty, what was the statistic that, that you had recently that the oh, NAR just came out with? How many? What was the percentage of people who are searching online before they ever contact a real estate agent? Oh, geez. Well, 20, like 25 percent on phone. Twenty five percent of people start their home search on phone, and then I think it's in the seventy to eighty percent range where people search for and find online, unless they drive by a home. But then, if they drive by your sign and see your sign and they see the property. They're still going back to the internet, and then now they're lost in the World Wide Web with all the other search criteria that's going on. So right? it'd be fairly important to have to for when somebody searched homes for sale in Kalamazoo that I have yeah. tags and and content that that makes me come up there with everyone else. Absolutely, absolutely. And Alyssa, and so, Annalisa saying eighty four percent was the number. So thank you, Annalisa. Yeah, yeah, eighty four percent. It's a big deal. All right, so 
if your target market, I mean, what is your audience likely and likely clients? I mean, what are they? I mean, everybody has their own niche. So if your target market is first-time home buyers, wouldn't it be a good idea to write articles and different information about first-time home buyers? And I'm going to give you so many ways to find content about this. You'd never even have to think about it. It's just there's so much out there, it's not even funny. And to and I'm going to show you some ways to literally blow it up and go, all right, how can I take the 10 things and put it into 10 different short, really 30-second to a minute videos and not only build my blog presence but also build my YouTube presence so I now have two different facets of when people search, I have a chance of showing up. And I'm like looking like the expert because I have not only one, but I have 10 different things uh, in different videos. Now, what rates, Paul, answer me this. What rates better? And I'm, I always go back to video because it's so, so powerful. What rates more in people's mind, a written statement or a video of the same written statement? Which one do you think has more perceived value? Well, there's a whole lot of reasons to behind why of this, but video by far has a much higher perceived value. First and foremost, it, it brands you as somebody. It puts you in a higher line. You get a sense of, nobody thinks you're Oprah, don't get me wrong, but you get that sense of celebrity status when you're in front of the camera and they're seeing your video. Plus, people have become gluttons for easy information, they would rather, if you've got something that's two paragraphs long, they know that they now have to read two full paragraphs to get the information. But if you've just got one video there, even if it's yeah. longer than two paragraphs, they're more likely right. to watch that video. No question. And it can be five minutes and they'll watch two and a half minutes of it. Here's the thing. It's like, okay, okay, if, it, it, would it be better to write a complex article talking about the half percent change in mortgage insurance that happened a while back? on an FHA mortgage, does anybody know what that means? They wouldn't understand, would they? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So break it down into, all right, they, I mean, they wouldn't understand what that is. So when it comes to buying a home for the first time, what are some of the things you should do? Well, don't make any large purchases. Heaven forbid, don't be having, don't be out looking for a new car, buying new furniture, you know, financing this, financing that, because that's going to hurt and people are going to want to know what you're doing because it looks like you're getting more credit, which is going to drop your score, right? So those are the things that they can connect with, not something about a program that really doesn't mean anything to them. What does that mean? What is it, does that like raise my payment, lower my payment? Is that good for me, bad for me, that type of thing? So um, they'll click off your site as soon as they get there. When they read something like that, like, okay, that was boring. I don't get it. I don't even know what that means. They're gone. All right? Absolutely. Clarity. Stay clear with your topic of choice for every blog post. Make it about the blog post, short and sweet and to the point. Stay current with updated information people are searching for today, all right? Not like a month ago. Like for me to talk about the Olympics this week, would I mean, it's old stuff, right? It's old news. It's gone. And this part about clarity, you know, it's clarity because you want your viewer to be entertained by what it is. You know, you want to give that entertainment value. That's what they're there for, you know, Correct. whether it's something that they're looking for for a purpose behind purchasing a new home. They're still there for an entertainment value of so to speak. However. The hidden treasure inside of keeping clear, staying on topic, being, making sure that the re the entire post is relevant to what you want people to see and yep. are searching for. The hidden gem in that is the search engine optimization that those keywords give you. Absolutely. And someone's asking, "Am I going to show you where to host your blog?" Oh, absolutely. You're going to get so much content that today is not about hosting. It's not about getting doing it free. And I'm going to show you how to really very, very easily do it for free and have it look really good. And then next week we're going to talk about your own hosting, which I would highly recommend if you're here today and listening and watching, come back next week. Cause you're, and, and before you make any decisions, just kind of go with whatever you want to go with. But um, a couple other things, and then, we'll, and, and then I'm going to go into a live demo. So use bold and italics to highlight important keywords. So if you're talking about first-time homebuyers, highlight first-time homebuyers because that's what they're searching for. That's what they're looking for. So they want to see that right away when they hit that article, first time home buyers, there's something here, I should read the rest of the article or I should watch the video, all right? Photos. I don't know about you, but I say this all the time, photos are worth, I mean, just say a thousand things. So when you do a blog post, I'm going to show you how to very easily add photos, which adds so much more attraction, excitement, and fun to you. It's kind of like having a, and I always talk about this menu at a restaurant. If yep. you go there and there's no pictures, 
it's like, God, man, how do I know what this is? You know, it, even though it's a what serious thing, that's where you get that's yeah. the photos add the entertainment value for you. Totally, remove some of the stuff off your menu and put, 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 put pictures on here. You know, you do better. You know what I mean? Unless you just people have been there and they've tried everything on the menu. But some, <laughs> you know, it's just not how it works. Pictures are pictures are say a thousand words. So making it look good, write short, precise paragraphs, no run on sentences, and then so how to get started. Should we go there? So let's talk about how to get started. So I'm going to talk about WordPress.com, okay? And I'm going to show you how easy, how free it is, and how how amazing you can make these blogs look for free and get a ton of exposure, start interacting and engaging with your past clients, current clients, and how to use this to tie into social media like Pinterest, like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. So the whole mindset is when you do a blog post, and you write an article, or you just have a blog, whatever, whatever it is you want to talk about, video, you take the link from your blog, and then Hootsuite that out. We all talked about Hootsuite a couple weeks ago. Hootsuite will allow you to take your blog post, the link to your blog post, because each post has its own link. So if, I'm, if I do a blog post about the 10 things you should know as a first-time home buyer, the, my, whatever my blog name is, is going to be my blog name, dot com forward slash what are 10 things you should know about buying a home, all right? That link goes into Hootsuite that gets pushed out to your Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. You can you can pin it, have it go there. I mean, all kinds of fun stuff here. So it takes some, and what I call a blog, Perry Belcher was the best on this. When he talked about a blog, he's like, okay, Facebook is a party. You get to know, like, and you, you have people trust you, and then you invite them over to your home for burgers, right? That's your blog. That's where you live and eat and breathe, and that's where you come on over. Hey, man, come I over. I love that. Me. I absolutely yeah. love that analogy. You meet them it, at the party, great. and you invite them over for burgers. Yeah. It's, it, it's absolutely over. appropriate. I love it. So go to WordPress.com, free version. Click on Get Started. I'm going to show you really quickly how to get set up and how crazy easy it is. So get started, and then you're going to put in. It's going to say, well, what do you want to call your blog? Uh, and I, I created one. I did this two days ago. I called it Agent Mastermind. So agentmastermind.wordpress.com is, is, if you go there right now, you can see it. And the username is at a, a, Agent Mastermind, and I got a password confirm, and then I put in an email address. Now, if you've already done this once, it's going to ask you, it, it, it's going to recognize that email, so that's why I used a, a weird email, so I could actually get this set up, because I have different blogs set up for different demos and stuff like that. But here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the, here's the mindset behind this thing. If I wanted, if I have a special event coming up, and I, this just, Let's just call it a Halloween party because Halloween's around the corner, right? Or Labor Day. I have a Labor Day party or I have a Hall whatever it is, like the last family get together before school starts. And I want to create a blog and, and like share photos of the party. And I want to, to comment like when it is. And I want to have people visit it and follow it and interact and engage and share their post. Like, does that, does that sound cool? You can do that with this. You can create a, you can create as many free blogs as you want. WordPress is not going to come out and go, You've uh, you've maxed out. You've created ten blogs and you're done. No, they're going to go. Do you want to create another blog? We'll just call it, you know, Hudspeth Labor Day Party. Boom, blog pictures, videos, um, people sharing, all kinds of fun stuff. You can, I mean, if you have a business party, if you have an event that you host at one, one of the local places, you can create a blog for that. Like, put a website up for it. It's really cool stuff. You're going to get an email that says Howdy Agent Mastermind, which is whatever the name of your blog is. This is activate your blog. And then you're going to choose your theme. You go, what do you want it to look like? How you know? What, you want a header at the top? You don't want a header at the top. You want a black? You want orange? You want yellow? All kinds of different choices to go with inside there. And then you'll see the show more themes. And once you choose, you go, no thanks. I'll just stick with the default theme for now. Whatever you want to do there. And here's the crazy thing about this: you go, I don't really like this theme. You can go back and change it anytime you want. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay? Any questions right now, Paul? Um, just one about um, what, what if your website already has a blog made for you by, by your mortgage team that you're working with, will that be good enough? And, and absolutely. So the answer to that is absolutely Ab yes. as long as you're keeping up with current content and you're yep. inviting people to come over for burgers. Absolutely. It, 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 you got to treat this as your home. This is your space on the web that's your home. It's like your real estate. That's really what it is. Treat it like that. Clean it up, right? Clean it up, make it look good, current content, freshen it up every once in a while, put relevant current content out there, maybe local content. Mm. I mean, you can post anything, and I'm going to give you five million ideas, literally, to uh, choose. So here's, um, when you find your theme that you like, you go, all right, I like this theme. You just click on choose this theme, 
and then uh, and then here's the dashboard. So we're going to go into a demo now of the dashboard, but this is pretty cool. WordPress done, and I was playing with this yesterday. It's pretty neat. I actually have a hosted version, which we're going to cover next week, and like where to get hosting, how to host it, how to how to activate it, and how crazy fast it is. Literally, literally, within five minutes, you can have a new website up. With I mean, in ten minutes, you can have a header up. In fifteen, like to a, to thirty minutes, you could literally have your own brand within thirty minutes. And we're going to show you exactly how to do that. So let's just take it step by step on the free version. Sound good? Sound perfect. So. Let's just go over this real quick. This is like this is like your dashboard. So, and I already have this open. I'm gonna go there live for a minute. So, you got the new post. You have a reader, notification, status, my blog. Look at, and it's with an S. You can create blog after blog after blog after blog. So, Fresh if you want one so specific for your sellers, you can have a blog for your sellers. If you want specific to potential buyers, you know, it's a good idea to keep. You know, those are those are two different entities, two different target groups. So, your message to them will be different, and it's. It's absolutely you do the same thing that you're doing for one that you do for the other. And how about this? How about, I mean, write this down. This is a writer downer. How about one for each one of your listings? <laughs> I mean, how about one for a neighborhood that you farm to? I mean, yeah, keep it on Facebook, but you know with the Facebook pages, you can put these websites inside your blog tabs now. So, I mean, it's guys, it's endless. This is like crazy. You can put... Picture like you can have you could give the seller their own blog and call it the address and go hey just want to share with you something I've done for you that I've already completed for you and just it's one of the things that I do because I think it's important we need to know why you bought this house could you you know answer a few questions on why you bought this house you, what pictures would you think are the most important thing that somebody would want to see in this house those are the pictures on the blog articles about the blog articles about the neighborhood you can find videos about the neighborhood. You can find videos about the school system that somebody's already done. Copy them. Take the thing and post it. I'm going to show you how to do all this stuff. So how far do you want to take this is really limited to your own imagination. Absolutely, and, your and own imagination. Crazy. So reader, okay, so the post is publish a new post. And then reader is read new post across all blogs you follow. Notifications, view let it, latest blog activity like new comments and followers. See how many people have visited your site. Visit your blog dashboard where you can access all of your settings. We're, we're going to go here. Click the name of your blog to see how it appears in the world. And then browse the best of WordPress.com. Update your account settings and public profile. And then review WordPress.com homepage navigation. So this is the dashboard. And uh, here's kind of here's the one I set up last night. So I'm going to go. Here, what I'm going to hey, cover Scotty. is I'm going to mainly go to, to get to your dashboard. Scotty, just to, to clarify a couple of things, there's a couple of questions have come in. The difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org is nothing yes. more. WordPress.com is the free version. WordPress.org is if you've already purchased your domain and you have hosting set up. It's yes. the same platform to build in either one. It's, it's the same platform, but the .com is the free version. We are going to get into the .org on part two yep. of this when we start talking about hosting. But just so everybody is on the same page, we're, we're showing .wordpress.com versus .org because this is the free version. You can you can still do you, this you, without having to buy hosting. Without zero having to buy. zero dollars. Yep. Yes, and you can create a very amazing. Now we're going to get into if you already have a domain name, how to take it if it's in GoDaddy. How to host it? How to put up your blog? How to add WordPress to it? How to? We're going to get there, but we're going to do it in steps. I want to go really basic first, and then we're going to go majorly advanced. And that's you know, to be honest, we're probably going to have to do three classes on this because there's just so many cool things you can do with this. I want to show you how to do it within a very short period of time. I want to try and remove the time that I've spent, which is literally hundreds, if not thousands, of hours learning this stuff, and give it to you in a way that you don't have to make the mistakes, and then you can get questions answered. On, like what, once we start doing this, you can go to the Facebook group that we have, the private group, and and ask questions. Say, hey, man, you talked about this, you talked about that. Could you really quickly show me that? All right. So we'll. Do, I mean, there's so many people. There's almost 600 people in that group, and I'm sure that if you ask the question, other people are going to have the same question. We can all learn together. So that's why that's kind of where I'm going with this. So I apologize if it's if this is a little basic, but I promise you, on class two or three, we're going to show you that you can take a domain name you already have, put a WordPress blog together, choose a template. And make that thing just just like gleam with like all kinds of glitter and fun stuff. All right. So here's your dashboard. Click on my blog and then go to dashboard right here. And then this is going to give you your dashboard. It's going to be your dashboard. This is where you're going to um, live, eat, and breathe most of the time when you come in here. Of course, 
you can all, I mean, you can take this as crazy as you want to get, but we're going to, we're going to stay pretty basic. So we're going to focus on a post. We're going to focus on pages. We're going to focus on appearance. And then we're going to talk a little bit about settings on how to tie in your social media with it. And that's what, that's what we're going to cover today, okay? So post, pages, appearance, and then settings if we have time, all right? Settings aren't as important. I want you guys to get to where you make your first post. And are you going to get frustrated? Absolutely. It's kind of like switching watches from one hand to the other. It's uncomfortable. It's frustrating. But then next week, the more you play with this stuff, it actually gets really fun, doesn't it, Paul? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I, I enjoy right. it quite a bit because it's. It, I'm creating my own. I'm making it look exactly what my vision of my website yes. is. Yes. All right. So all I can say is, yes, you can do this, okay? You can do this. And the most important part is you can make it your own. So when if you ever leave one company to go to another, and I'm not saying that's what you need to do, and I'm not recruiting, I'm not on this for any one company. I'm just saying protect your own business. If you opened a business that wasn't in real estate, if you opened a coffee shop, you wouldn't go out and brand like another coffee shop, you know, just tag onto theirs. You would make it your own, your own email, like your own. I can show you. We're going to show you how to make a, a, a .com your email and use it inside Gmail. We're going to get really, really, some, some really cool stuff. So, all right, let's do this. All right, so I'm going to assume you've already went to uh, agentmastermind.com. I did this last night in 10 minutes, okay? I'm going to show you how to do this header. This is a, this is a free WordPress.com, and you can see that it's agentmastermind.com, excuse me, agentmastermind.wordpress.com. And if you go there, you can see it. I put up an article, 10 Things You Must Do Before Buying a Home. And if you click continue, I'm going to show you how to make it look really pretty like this so you're not seeing, like, the whole article like this. Because if you if you click on it, you see the whole article. It's like, okay, there's only one article for a form to choose from. But if I, if I go back and go continue, maybe I don't want to read this article, but I want to read this article, cleaning out your closet. And then there's a video here. So I'm going to show you how to put a video in here using your YouTube account. So now you're branding your YouTube. And then here you, you, you see re recent posts. I'm going to show you how to put your picture over here if you want to. And then last but not least, I'm going to show you these tabs up here. So you can have as many as you want going across the top. You can have listings, foreclosures, all kinds of fun stuff. Now, you're a little limited on what you can do in the free version, but as you can see, it looks pretty dang good. And it's probably, I mean, if you don't have one right now, this would be pretty awesome. Like you see it here, I got this little sign I found, Help Wanted Rockstars. And well, like, even so like, the the main thing with this is even in the free version, I may be limited as some of the things I can do, but I can still control my own brand. I can be my own business at this point. Person. I don't yeah. have to be Paul Baxter forward slash KW. I don't have to be right. century21.com forward slash Paul Baxter. I can be paulbaxter.com. I can be my own brand. And, and okay. people would buy from me and not my company. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, here, and here's the thing is this link goes to me. Now, let, let, let me just show you something really cool before I go into the dashboard. Like, see this thing, how it lights up? Can you guys tell that that lights up when I go to it? We're a little bit delayed on you, buddy. Okay. So when I hold my mouse over 10 yes. things you must do yep. before buying a home, right? We're with you now. Okay. If I click on that, you'll notice that my, my domain name changes at the top. There's a little lag on my end, too, so hopefully it'll be about the same. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to take me to the article. So now if you look up here, it says agentmastermind.wordpress.com. It shows the date. It says 10 things you must do before buying a home. Which is so the specific URL link specific for that URL. post only. That post Correct. only. That post only. So they're going to see this post. Now, they're still going to see the tabs. They're still going to see what I put over here on the right-hand side. But it's going to take them, if they're interested and they click on it, it's going to take them to this. All right? Now, I'm going to show you where I got this article. I did not type this last night. <laughs> and I would not recommend typing this. But I'm just going to show you where to get stuff like this, as long as you give credit to where credit is due, from the people that actually wrote it. Okay? If you're a writer... I love you already because I'm not a writer, okay? As you guys can tell, I'm, I misspell words all the time. It's just not <laughs> what I do, okay? I'll just be totally up front. But I you're an expert that. at snagging them from other places, my friend, and that, and you know what? That makes you the expert that delivered that's, the message. That's, that, that's right, the whole that's right. thing. You don't have to be the one that wrote it. You're the expert that delivered it. That's right. All right, so let's go into the actual dashboard of your blog, okay? So my blog... Here's my, this is the dashboard of what it looks like when you log in. So you're going to click on my blog. And then um, 
you're going to see this agent mastermind primary blog and look look at create a new blog you want to know you want another one here it is create a new one start posting to a new blog in seconds so see this dashboard button right here like right from here I could do a new post if I wanted to, or I could see the stats if I wanted to. So I'm just going to go to the dashboard. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to show you guys. We're going to focus on a couple things. One is I want to start with the theme. When you go, all right, and what, and what I would recommend when you're working on your blog to have two tabs open, okay? So have one tab that shows the, the actual, your blog so you can see it. And then one is your dashboard. So you have your dashboard open, and you have your actual blog open. So when you make a change, you can really quickly go back, refresh, and see the change. Make sense? It absolutely makes sense to do it that way because then you're staying on track with what, you know, you've got a vision and you want to see that vision coming to fruition. Yeah. If you make a bunch of changes and you don't know what it looks like, you may be putting things in, in different places and it will cause extra work. So it's always important to be able to go back and forth and see where you're at, what your progress is doing. Correct. Okay, so appearance. So I'm going to start with appearance because I want you to have a theme. I want you to pick one that you like. So I'm going to go, all right, so see this appearance button right here? Yep, we're with you. I only you. want you to focus on a couple things. So appearance and then themes. So appearance and themes. I'm going to click on themes. It's going to go, all right, here's the theme that you currently have, which this is the theme that I'm using right now. And we're you can on upload a little, hold on, and slow down stuff. just a sec. Okay. We're, we're just behind you. Okay, we're now seeing you're on the 2010 is the theme that okay. you currently are using. Yep, this is the theme. So the theme you are, you, you, you are, you're using is always at the top. And then if you scroll down, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. These themes are down below. Now, some of them say premium. I just stay away from those. You don't need them. And trust me, you don't need to pay unless you really find something like a real estate theme that you absolutely love and you get to use this. Like you get to you get used to this stuff to where like, okay, I like doing this. I want to make it more real estate related for some reason. I want to be able to upload my property stuff. You don't need it. Trust me on that. But if you get to that point, let's just talk, okay? So manifest, here's comment, here's did you know parent theme. One of the uh, cool I mean, things about these themes, one of the yeah. cool things is is if you notice there's a details button under each one of them. Yeah. What that will actually do is is by clicking the details, it will tell you what that theme, what's cool about that. Can I change the header? Can I how many columns are available for me in this particular theme? It will give you all of the the features that that theme is going to make available for you. So if you look right. at like the columnist Obviously, I am not able to put a header on that, but I've got columns galore. So if I want a whole bunch of columns that, that, that hyperlink to different places, that's the one I go want to go with. But if I want to make sure that I can put a really cool header in there, I want to stay away from the columnist. I may go with something like Paramount because it looks like I can add my own header up at the top of Paramount, and I'd want to read about that. So make sure that when you're selecting your theme, you, you read through some of these. Choose one that, that makes sense for you based on what your what your vision of your website is because really building this blog you're building yourself a website you're building yourself your well you're building your brand so here's the cool thing if you want to click live preview and go all right I don't want to look what it looks like or if you just want to activate it it's okay to go backwards and go man I don't like that one but if you want to click live preview let me just click live preview and it's going to put your stuff inside this blog and go hmm that looks okay and uh, see how it says save and activate. So here's my listing. Here's my 10 things you must do before buying a home. Now, it's not going to put that header up there because that's, that's, that's a little more complicated. But it's, it's still really easy. But it's like, okay, do I like the looks of this more so than what I had? Or do I like, you know, here's the video. Here's how the video looks. And it actually is like, man, that looks pretty good, right? So I'm going to go, all right, I'm going to save and activate. Or I go cancel and I'm going to choose a different one. All right? So if I save and activate, let's just save and activate it. I literally, within 30 seconds, not even 30 seconds, like three seconds, now if I go back, see how I have two tabs open here? Let me know when you see my old uh, my old template. You see that? Yeah, Paul? Yes. Okay. So if I refresh this, I'm just going to hit return. I'm going to highlight it and return. It's going to come up with, here's my new template. Done. Changed. I got a new look. I got a new brand. It's all mine. It's that easy. And nothing changes. All my posts stay the same. My things up here change because I got to add new ones. I got to add the contact. The contact is there. Should stay the same. Whatever I added before. It's pretty cool stuff. And then you got continue reading and puts it in. Puts each post in its own little box, which is neat. I like that. But what, what important to make sure that everybody saw here, just with a simple click of a button, 
Yep. Scott has completely changed his website. He want, it, it completely changed the entire look and feel of this website. So you can do the same thing with yours if you don't like the look and feel of your of your of your theme that you've chosen. Simply right. pick another one, check it out, and see. Go get go get a feel of what it feels like, looks like, or feels like to you. Now that you've done that, now it looks like they've removed your header. So this theme obviously does not allow for a header. No, it does. It does. You just got to upload it still. Yeah, you just got to okay. upload it still. Yep, it does allow for a header. So, like, say that I say that I don't like that one, and I want to go back to the default. I would just go back and find the default. So I would go, here's, like, A through Z. Here's, like, everything. A through Z. Here's popular. Here's newest. Here's the premium if you want to spend some money on one. You don't have to. Recently active. So, like, remember I had that one that was active? Yep. And here's the one, 2010. So recently active. I had 2010, and I tried this one out. I didn't like it yet uh, last night. But here's 2010. I go, you know what? I like that one better than I do the one I just uploaded. Just go back to activate and go, I'm going to stick with that one because I like that one better. And now I'm back to, to where I was. All right? Genius. It's fast, easy, and how much did that cost me? Zero dollars and so zero zero dollars. Your total on your on your checkout so far today own, is yeah. forty two minutes. How you know forty two minutes, and and you've been explaining yep. it as you go. So yep. All right. So so that kind of walks through the theme. Let's go to a post. All right. Let's go. I want to make a post, and I want to I want to go into I want to post something about buying a foreclosure. Okay. So I, I just where am I going to find content for buying a foreclosure? Now I have a Word doc. Let me just show you this thing real quick so you guys can all get this. You're going to have to request this from the loan officer that sent you here. But this Word document has, it, Paul, I, I haven't showed you this yet, but here's blog article idea websites. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me just show you this. This is insane. So if you go to one of these sites, uh, let's see. So Famous Agents. This is called Famous Agents Content Ideas, 106 content ideas for realtor who has nothing to write about. I love the title, right? So here's one. One through how many? 106. That's just one link that I'm giving you. Okay, so is there content out here? Absolutely. Now here's another trick here. If I go to ezinearticles.com. This is one of my favorites. This is my favorite too, man. So ezinearticles.com has 454,259 expert authors sharing their best articles. That's authors, okay? Okay, buying a foreclosure. You want to be the expert? Let's be the expert. So buying a foreclosure, I want to search the articles of somebody else that's written an article on buying a foreclosure. Give it a second here, and within a second, it's going to give us, 26,800 results, all right? Just a few to choose from. How, how many 26,800? 26,800. <laughs> <laughs> there is not enough information on that subject. Five tips for buying foreclosure properties. Let's check this out. All right, so let's go to this article. It says, don't buy a foreclosure action. Let's see, buying a property at a foreclosure action is risky. Work closely with the realtor broker, buy REO, get pre-qualified, calculate how much you can afford. Love it, right? So I check to see who this guy's from today, Real Estate World. Make sure he's not a competitor of mine in my local area, because if he is, then I wouldn't post his article. But here's what I'm going to do, guys. So I'm going to go, all right, I'm going to copy this thing. I'm going to copy where the credits are coming from, because that's what I'm supposed to do with I the, 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 uh, like the, what is it, the, um, what am I looking for? Legally, you're supposed to copy word for word all the stuff that that takes place in um, in this article and give credit to where credit is due, and that's what I'm going to do. And I really personally don't care that uh, someone else wrote the article, but I want to – whoa, I'm losing something here. It's kind of freaking out on me. All right, let me back up. I keep having an issue here, maybe just with Chrome. So I'm going to copy this dude. Now, could you take this article and rewrite it yourself? Absolutely. You could send it to, there's some, uh, and we should probably do a class on this, how to take an article and send it to someone else and rewrite it as it's yours and if now it's your article. And here's the thing, if you want to be like, the, like have more exposure, build your brand through eZine articles, take something of topic that has to do with the housing industry or buying a home, selling a home, write your own articles, and eZine articles will publish them 
Now you are getting credit. People are copying your articles and putting your stuff on their blog to post out there. How cool would that be, right? All right, so I'm going to go to post. Let me know when you're there, Paul. You there, buddy? Did I lose you? Oh, I'm sitting okay. here talking to you about not yet, not yet, not yet. Not now yet. we're okay. there. Now we're there. Okay. <laughs> now we're so seeing post, posts. All post, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a new post. Now the title was Five Tips for Buying a Foreclosure. See this add new button right here? Add new button. There you go. Add new, and I'm going to call it Five Tips for Buying a Foreclosure. Five Tips for Buying a Foreclosures. And what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure I got the visual checked here, and then I'm going to copy-paste. It's that easy. Now I have the article inside my blog. I'm giving credit to where credit is due. And uh, there's today's world. The guy that wrote it, article source, easy on articles. That's cool. No big deal. And all I have to do, now let's, let's add a picture to this, okay? Let's add a picture. This is how easy this is to add a picture. So I'm going to go to Google, very, very special private site that you need to keep to yourself. This is only for people on the call. And I'm, see this little images button right here? Let me know when Not you yet. That, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. All right, we're, we're seeing images. All right, let's go to foreclosures. Let's just Google foreclosure pictures and see what, uh, see what comes up. Just a second here. Search. Maybe. At some point. Uh, I think I'm stuck here. One sec. I'll be it's... good. All right. Let's go to foreclosures. And in you, I don't even need that. I just want a picture. So here is a link. Uh, let's see. Price reduced foreclosure bank owned. Pretty good. Pretty good one there, right? Make sure it's not copywritten. Make sure it's, if it's another website, I'm sure they won't care. I'm sure they took it from somebody else as well. Or go take your own picture, heaven forbid, right? Foreclosures next right, whatever. So let's see. Let's just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to right-click on that picture. I'm going to save image as, and I'm going to call it foreclosure. Save it in, I'm just going to save it under downloads. I'm going to put foreclosure logo or picture. Click save. All right, I saved it under downloads. I'm going to go back to let me let me know when you're back to WordPress here. Okay, Scott, cool. just a quick question while you're in yep. this screen and on our way back to WordPress. We we're back okay. on WordPress as just so you know. Okay. When you're okay. taking stuff off of Google like that with the right click save as, do you do you concern are are you concerned with copyright issues? I'm not depending on who whose blog it is or whose website it is. If it's a if it's another blog person or I know that they didn't probably take the picture themselves. They took it from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not now, too worried about it. I okay. have been approached and said, "Hey, please take down my photo. That's my photo that I made specifically for me." Okay, fine, no big deal. There's, you take it down no harm, and you no move problem. on to the next one. I took it down. Yeah, I find the next one. So, so there are two yeah. ways to overcome that. The first way yeah. is simply use Jing. If you use yeah. Jing, you are making your own image of an image. It's um, you, you're not linked back to that photo in any way. If you're using Jing, just FYI. Right. The other way is inside of inside of Google itself. On the top right, you can drop down the settings button and you can select what's called Safe Search. And what that allows you to do is make a selection that will only show you images that have been approved for for reuse or that have been labeled for reuse. So you can do it either way. Um, I do it with Jing, and and you know my my images are are my images at that point. Cool. All right. So adding a picture now, and, and it's very easy. I'm going to go real quick just before we and right after this. I'm going to go show you how to build your own picture very very easily in PowerPoint. I'm going to show you how to build your own header. So um, real quick, on the left hand side, see where my mouse is blinking right there? That's where I want the picture because that's the start of the blog post, okay? So I'm going to click on the Add Image button, which is right here. You guys see that, Paul? Yep. Okay, click on Add Image. And I'm going to select Files. And there's my foreclosure picture. And it's going to really quickly upload this thing to my media library inside WordPress. Now, I try to make my own pictures. You'll see a lot of the pictures I post. Uh, I actually made my own in PowerPoint. But um, I'm just doing this to save some time here. So here's the picture. 
and then you scroll down. We'll see where it says insert into post. Now, before you do that, see where it says left, center, right, right here? You can actually put the words to the left of it. You can put the words in the center all the way around the picture, and you can put the words to the right of it. So I'm going to put it on the left just to show you guys what I mean by that, and then I'm going to insert into post. So see how I put the picture, and now I have the words off to the left, and it does the professional job at that. Once I'm done with that post, all I do is click Publish. But before I click Publish, see how, see how this is a really long paragraph? And then I got don't buy a foreclosure auction. And then I want I want people to read my article instead of have it open all up and, and be a huge long article. I'm going to space down. See where the space is right here? There's a little button. This one right here it says insert more tag. It's this easy to add that tag. So I'm going to click insert more tag. And you'll see, a, you, you guys probably won't be able to see it, but you can see the more there. Yep. All right. That, what that does is it goes, all right, I, I don't want to show all of that post. I just want to show a portion of it. So if that's the one they're interested in, they will click on more to read the whole article. All right, so it cleans it up. So you can show three, four, five different posts, depending on how short you want to make this, on the front home page of your blog. Okay? Click publish. And remember, I have the, another tab open, so I'm going to go there. I just published a brand new blog article. And. There it is. Okay, I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to refresh this. And here it is. Five tips for buying a foreclosure. That five tips for buying foreclosures. See that? Almost. Yep, now we've got it. Now we okay. got it. It's that easy. So now, here's the thing. If I click on this link right here, every post is its own link that you can take to the social media sites. Remember we showed you how to manage your social media with Hootsuite? You can take the link. If I click on this, it's going to take me to, and it says, agentmastermind.wordpress.com forward slash the date, five tips for buying foreclosures. Boom. I'm going to copy that link, take it to my social media sites, post it out there. Anybody clicks on it, where is they going? To your hamburger spot at your house. Back to my, yeah, let's have some hamburgers, man. This is where I'm at. This is where I'm living. Now, let me show you before we leave. Okay, so you're going to make a post. Let's just go with that, okay? I've got, ten, I've got eight minutes left, I wanna, and I want get, to get you guys out of here. So um, you've created a free a free blog, you've made a post, you've chose your template. Let's go to PowerPoint really quick and show you how to make your own. I'm going to open up another, open another PowerPoint. So what you need to do is remember when we did the Facebook headers, same exact thing. You're going to click Design up in the top left and then Page Setup. Now, typically, I'm going to go with uh, right around the two because it's a lot narrower on the actual height than it is a Facebook header. Head, a Facebook header is a lot bigger. And then I'm going to leave it at 10 just to be safe because I can, I can change that later. So I'm going to click OK. Now, this is going to be my, my, my blog header. See how that looks on, uh, on screen, Paul? Yep. It's, it's thin. Right. It's, going to look a, it's a lot like what it's going to look like inside of, inside of your WordPress blog as well. Absolutely. So I'm going to go to insert. Now here's my new favorite thing inside this is adding adding letters. So see this says thing that says word art. This yep. is word out there. Word art. Right here in the center. You see that, Paul? Yep. We're on you. Okay. So you can choose word art, and then all you do is you click on the insert button, and then click on any one of these letters, however you want it to look. Let's just let's just click on this one, and then I'm going to put buying foreclosures. So what this does is quickly formats the look. Instead of having to spend a whole lot of time in the edit field where I'm making my font size be, right. you know, 32 and making my my, you know, my shape fill be white and my shape outline be blue. Those are, you know, you could do the same thing by going way. through all of those different pieces or you can go yep. the short way and and select an art fit, you know, an art now, here's the cool thing about this is you can, like, after you're done with this, it's going to come up with, like, just click Format if it's not there. Click Text Effects and then Transform, and it allows you to put a little curvature to it, all right? Give it a little pizzazz, little look. Now, say I want to put a picture of that foreclosure in here. Now, I can do that. I'm going to go back to Google so you guys see the buying foreclosures, which, I mean, it can be any name you want. If I want to change the background to this, I go to Design. Show me when you... Let, let me know when you see design there, Paul. Yep, we're there. Okay, design, and then you got all kinds of designs you can have. Like maybe I want purple background, 
Maybe I want a black background, which is, that's pretty cool, right? I mean, you guys see the black background? Yes. Okay. Uh, here's the green. Here's the uh, blue. I mean, all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff. Let's just pick. I love I love this one right here. This is pretty cool. So it's got a little coming out like a like a ray of sun or whatever. And say I want to add a picture to it. And I want to keep it real clean, or but I want to add a picture to it, or maybe a couple pictures. So let's just go add some pictures. So I'm going to go back to Google, and let's see. I'm going to go to Google. Let me know when you see Google there, Paul. Google Images. Foreclosures, and or you could write the text in there too. So let's just add a. I want to show you how easy it is to add a picture, and then you can kind of critique your own. Um, I like this foreclosure next exit, so I'm going to grab that one. We're not seeing that part yet. We're so we're okay. we're seeing that you've selected Google Image. Okay, now we're now we're caught up with you. Okay, so I'm going to right click, and I'm not going to save, but I'm going to copy image. Okay, right click, copy image, and then I'm going to go back to PowerPoint, and I'm going to right click anywhere in the screen. And I'm going to paste. So it's going to put the foreclosures next right, right there. You guys see it? It's real big. Yep. Okay. Now you can change the size of this photo. And it's amazing what you can do with this. Change the size of the photo. I can put it right there if I want to. Um, I can write more stuff down below. Like there's so I put foreclosures next right. And then I want to, I mean, so you guys can add pictures. You can add real live photos of homes that you have in foreclosure. I mean, you can you can make this header any way you want to. So I'm going to add some text. I'm going to just go up, buying a home, buying, buying foreclosures in, I'm in Kalamazoo, by the way. Whoops. Oh, wow. Should be fun. All right. Now, how I get it centered is I take this all the way to the left, and I take the other side all the way to the right. Let me know when you can see that. So I got the whole space here because I want to have this exactly centered. And I click the center button so it centers it for me. All right. There's my header. I'm just going to leave it at that. You guys can go crazy with this stuff and add pictures, add, add writing, add letters, add whatever you want to do. And then what I want to do is I'm going to I'm going to save this as a JPEG, okay? So I'm going to go on File, Save As, and then let me know when you can see this. I'm going to call this Foreclosure Header, and I'm going to go JPEG. See the JPEG file interchange format? Save it to my desktop, and I'm going to Save. Got it? You see that, Paul? So you just saved the slide as an image itself, save not as an actual image, PowerPoint yeah. slide. What it's going to do, yeah, it's going to say, do you want to export every slide in the presentation or only current slide? I only have one slide, so I'm going to say current slide. So I saved it. So when I go back to my blog to edit or add a header to, to change the header, if I go inside, you'll see. Let me just let me go to let's see. I'm going to go to my dashboard. Let me just go to remember where we said uh, we we'll go to appearance. Let me know when you can see this. And then there's a there's a spot that says header in here. We're not there yet. Just bear hold, okay. hold on. We're just now getting to your data. Appearance and then header. Yep, go ahead. See that? So I'm going to click on it. So under appearance is header. So I'm going to click on header. And you'll see that here's my header I currently have in there. And it says right below it, it says uh, images of exactly 940 by 198 pixels. See that? And that's that's important. Everybody, please pay attention. And this is this is the uh, I've been getting a bunch of this question over and over. And I was just getting right right, yeah. But how do you what's the what's the dimension you used again? Now in PowerPoint, right it's going to go by inches. So what Scott did when he opened up PowerPoint when he did page setup is he just set it to 10 inches by two inches to give him a visual idea of how that header is going to look. Not necessarily to make it exactly 940 by 198. He yeah. just was giving himself a visual image of what that's going to look like so that he could build it correctly. Make Correct. sure that the thing was centered. Make sure that the, the foreclosure next exit sign was on the left side of his main pay, main message, which was, I can't remember now, the, the, the big message that you put in there. Foreclosure, foreclosure yep. for you. So yep. it, it's... Inside a PowerPoint, when you're doing that, you're only giving yourself a visual image of what a header is going to look like. Now, once he Correct. goes to size that, he can open this up. Are you going to open it in Earthen View and resize it there? I am. 
Yep. So to get the right exact size, remember the right size is 940 by 198. See that right there? Yep. Okay, so this is another free software. Like, there is no charge for anything I've showed you today. You can do 100% of this. You can have somebody, you can train a college, like a college assistant, or I mean, whatever. You can have them go, listen, I want you to watch this recording, and I want you to build me a header, and this is what I want it to look like, right? Make sure I mean, that you type, that you spell Earth and View correctly when you go to yeah. download the free version. Yeah. If yeah. you spell it incorrectly, if you spell I-F-R-A-N instead of I-R-F-A-N, it is I R F A N V I E W. If you spell it incorrectly, it will take you to a place that says there's a free download, but you will be downloading not something good for your computer. Not good for your computer. So I R F A N V I E W. It's a free software. So when you have Earth and View here, you click on File. Remember, I want 940 by 198. I'm going to click Open, and then there's my foreclosure header that I saved as a JPEG. See JPEG image. And it's going to put the, I'm going to open this up big so you guys can see it. So here it's going to put the header inside Earth and View. All right? So and there it I, is. I know right we're showing there. you a lot. You have the recording. You're going to have the PowerPoint and stuff like that. And then, of course, please ask questions on the page. And we can do really short tidbit videos of how to do this because, I mean, Paul is very versed at this. I'm very versed at this. And a lot of people on the page can do it as well. So when you get it in Earth and View, I R F A N V I E W, you click on Image and you click on Resize, Resample. Then I want to go to 940 by, what was it, 198, by, one, 940 okay. by 198. So it's important to remember when you're inside of PowerPoint, they're going on inches. Inside of Earth and View, it's all about pixels. You don't pixels. have to worry about the conversion is. You just know yeah. what the number of your particular theme is. And uncheck these boxes right here. Uncheck these boxes, preserve aspect ratio, uncheck them. Because the, otherwise they're going to give you percentages. So if you put in 940, it's going to tell you what they think it should be right here. You want to uncheck these boxes right here, okay? Click OK. That's the size. It's pretty dang close to what my what the header is. So let's just save this thing. So I'm going to go File, Save, and I'm going to keep it the same name because I want to replace it. Foreclosure header. It's on my desktop. Done. It says, hey, replace file, yes. And now I'm going to go to Upload. Let me know when you're at WordPress. We just saw you save the file, and we're now at we're now at WordPress. So we see Remember you're on the themes, themes, and then, and then header. header, and then I'm going to choose file. And there it is, foreclosure picture. Actually, it's on my desktop. Let me just go there. It's the right one. So here's the one, and I'm going to upload. It says foreclosure header JPEG, and I'm going to upload. Pretty cool stuff. So now here's the header. The new header I just built and put in here, and if I go refresh this, I'm going to go to click Home, I got a new header. Is that cool? That's awesome. And and Tony's asking a quick question. For those Mac users out there, um, I'm not 100% sure. Scotty, can you can you go to earthandview.com real quick? Yeah, yeah I think Would it you works mind? on... Uh, I think there is a Mac download available on, on the site as yeah, well. There is, there I believe is. there is. I'm just not 100%. I just want to make sure for those download. Mac users out there, you guys should be able to use Earth and View. Um, yeah, you should. There's, there's a Mac download. Uh, let's see. And it's only probably seeing mine because I, well, I have a PC. I didn't, uh, I didn't see it, but let me just go back here. View converts. Ooh, maybe there's uh, not. Irfanview, I R F A N V I E W for Mac. Download Irfanview free image viewer. Yeah. Equivalent for Mac. Here's an equivalent one for Mac. Let's see what this one is. Um, I think we had this question the last time. And, and while you're looking for that, Annalisa has a fantastic question here. Is how do I add my MLS or my IDX to WordPress and can be it's on its own page? The short answer to that, Annalisa, is yes, and that's what we're going to be covering on next part week, two yeah. next week on on how to spruce up and really how to, to take your blog. We wanted to show the basics today, how to pick your theme, how to set up your header, how to get your first post on there. Next week, we're going to be showing how to add more pages and how to tie in your multi, your MLS searches or your IDX codes that you're using and, and how to host on your own. So we're going, to, we're going to be getting deeper into it next week, Annalisa, and, and I'm glad, you know, it's wonderful to hear you asking those questions because you're Absolutely. thinking ahead. You're forward thinking Absolutely. about 
how is yeah. this going to work for your business and the things that you do it. So um, I, I'm silently clap. Well, I'm not silently clapping, but you can't <laughs> hear it through the headphones. I'm clapping for you, Annalise. I appreciate yeah. that, and I'm uh, really excited that you're moving forward with it. Cool. All right, so um, if you guys got to go, um, feel free to go. I just want to go over really quick and finish this up on what to blog about and just really quickly. So um, do not post a photo or video with no text. You might also, mm. like, so just, just to put a photo up there with nothing on it, uh, so don't forget to include keywords in your blog entry. What are keywords? We're going to focus, we're going to have a huge class, in fact, this might turn into four classes, but keywords are stuff that people would search about, and we're going to show you how to find what those keywords are. Like, for example, Kalamazoo home buyers, buying a home in Kalamazoo, buying a home in Grand Rapids, buy, wherever you live, what, what do people search for, and what, why would they search for that? And then we'll, we'll show you how to find those. Don't forget to include links to your main site which is if you have another site, don't duplicate or be guilty of copy and pasting blogging. Uh, search engines are changing their rules. So when you copy from eZine articles, you might want to change it up a little bit. I, don't, I haven't seen a huge problem. Paul knows more about that stuff. It's called the Penguin, right? It, the so Penguin software was stuff. released by Google that is it's, – it's, it's making it difficult for web – Webmasters, I guess, is what you you would officially call them, to manipulate the the search engine optimization algorithms. They okay. used to have little tricks that they could do to manipulate the search engine so that their sites would show first. Well, Penguin Software has stopped that. And so, okay. if you're posting relevant content, regardless of whether you're taking it from ezines or not, if it's relevant to your to your blog, if it's relevant to the other posts. Then you have no issue with that. It's 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 mainly so if you're plagiarizing if and making. Putting, if I start writing about the Olympics and it had nothing to do, my blog had nothing to do with the Olympics. They're going to go. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to work. It's it's about relevant content. The relevant links content, back have yeah. to be relevant. It's that's okay. the number one thing they want these days is relevant content. Okay. Write well. Write often. Uh, find someone to write for you. We hired. Listen to this. We found a writer to write for us. Five bucks an article. In Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -F -E five bucks an article, all right? Killer stuff, right? So like one a week, one, twice a week, ten bucks a week, I got relevant content. And guess what? The content is mine. It's not, I'm not borrowing it from somebody else. I give her a title. I go, write an article on this. Now whether, hopefully she's not going out and just copying, I'm, I, in fact, I could probably find that out if she was, but that's just, just an idea there. Leverage your social sites and main site to drive traffic to your blog. Remember, we said put the link to your blog. They invite them over for burgers, right? Add your listing widget to your blog. We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to go crazy with that stuff. We're going to show you how to add your listing presentation, your listing, everything to do with your property. We're going to make it about the property because that's what people want to see. Uh, weekly, how often? Here's a couple things like um, how often is like I would do it, man, if I would, I, would, I would religiously try and do it at least every other day, two, three blog posts a week would be really good. And uh, if worst case scenario, maybe once or twice a week, just find something that you can blog about or uh, you know trending topic. Maybe there's something on the news you heard about foreclosures. Go find it and just share. I, some of the major blog sites in the world use other people's content. Okay, so it's not about having to come up with your own content. Just find out what's trending. And uh, here's some ideas: realestateblogideas.com, Pinterest. We find some amazing stuff on Pinterest. We just turn it into a video. Active Rain, Agent Genius, uh, here's a bunch of other ones, Twitter, Facebook, Wall Street Journal, LA Times, all kinds of good stuff going on there. These are links, you're going to get this PowerPoint and you'll be able to, if you view it, you'll be able to get it, but I'm going to give you the Word doc to it. So all kinds of ideas there. And then of course, post to LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter using your Hootsuite account. If you haven't signed up, you got to go back and watch the Hootsuite presentation and how crazy powerful that is to get who you are, your brand, and get all your stuff out there to all the social media sites. It's really crazy powerful, some amazing results. I mean, I, I hear of people, see, I, I have people call me all the time going, this is unbelievable. I can now communicate in all four parties. I'm at all four parties all the time. So good stuff there. And then this is what we're going we're gonna to cover a lot on this next week is um, just how to add these tabs, how to put video in there, how to link to other stuff. And, just, and then we're going to go into the paid version of hosting how to host, where to host, why you should host there, how to add WordPress to your hosting, how to add a domain name to your hosting, how to add an email to your hosting so your email 
is inside Gmail. We got a lot of stuff to cover. It's and really, hey, really folks, good. don't hesitate to get to jump on the free version and start playing Absolutely. with it. Start building. Here's the cool thing about WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Whether you're hosting or not hosting, if you build your WordPress on the free version and you decide a year from now, six years from now, that you wanna you wanna start hosting it on your own and get a domain name and all those things. It is nothing but an export import. It really, really simple to merge your free WordPress to your your self hosted WordPress. It's very simple to do. It's not something you have to worry about. Several questions coming in from uh, from some agents right now about the recording. Yes, this absolutely was recorded. If you'd like to get a or would like to see a replay of today's recording, simply contact the loan officer that invited you today. And they'll be able to get you a replay of this, as well as last week's uh, Hootsuite webinar um, and and some of the past webinars that we've had before. The Hootsuite kind of ties into this because it helps you understand how to get your content out there. Um, make sure that you do not miss next week's class because we're really going to take these basics that we went through today and show you how to implement them and and really start putting it. Um, putting it together and tying the different things together with your social media and your blog site and how they all work with one another to really help you do what it is that you're looking to do and that's dominate the internet you know you want to be able to control your content when somebody googles your name yep. you want to know that you've you've you're own you they're own. seeing only what you, you want it. them to see absolutely Correct. you own control. it so yeah. you know yeah. just contact your the loan officer that invited you today they'll get you set up with the replays answer any questions and if they can't answer the questions they certainly have access to us to be able to get the answers for you cool so there's a couple questions um should you have a facebook like should i have a blog or just use the facebook i would say yes to both you should have both um even if it's i'm, I'm going to show you a static blog next uh next week where we go into how to set up your own hosting and stuff, but it's nice to have a place that is a website, not a Facebook. Just, I mean, I, I mean, Facebook is not going away, but it's just nice to control your own destiny. I mean, if you have a website, you can tie Facebook into it. If Facebook, some for some reason, dies off, you still have your website, you still have your blog, you still have your brand. Now, is it going to be 20 years from now? Maybe I don't know. Maybe 10. I don't know. It's 60. Just, why not? <laughs> you can add Pinterest to your website. You can add, and when I say website, I mean blog. So there's so many things you can do with it to create it yourself and then uh, and then the best part is when you change companies it's just changing the logo everything stays the same nothing changes what if what if facebook comes around and says you know what i don't like what you're posting on your facebook page and they shut you down you know what i mean it's just protection you own this you own it's your server you pay for it and it's it, it's so crazy how cheap it is it'll blow your mind so we'll cover that next week but um is my Facebook page called? Yeah, the the Facebook group for those people that are here for the first time. If you want to go to the favorite group, it's uh, the the private group. It's facebook.com oops, forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind. All right, Let me blow that up for you. So if you if you're not a if you're not one of those, it's just uh, free to sign up. There's no nothing there. Just a a bunch of good people. Uh, kind of getting together and having a good party and, and teaching and learning from each other. So if you have a question, don't be shy by any means. Um, hey, Scotty, that um, that link, that page you were showing just a second ago with the different links for content, are you gonna? Yeah. Sh is that available to us? Yes, it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually give that to just contact the loan professional that sent you here, and I will make sure that they get it. And th these links are all good links. I checked them all to be sure. But there's um, RSS pieces. There's real estate made of, I mean, there's million different things of ideas I mean some really good stuff I spent a lot of time looking for these things so um, you can go and 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 use all their ideas and it's all about real estate so 100% awesome. about real estate yep. sweet sweet Scotty thank you again Sorry, my friend um, I appreciate I, you know I learned a lot in this class I, I think I told you the other day I've been using WordPress for a little while I've always done it I, I always thought I had to do the free version based on some of the things I want my vision of my website and uh, and you've shown me I don't necessarily have to do that. I can still do everything that it is I want to do without having to without having to pay any money. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yes, yes. So no money spent, but the money you're going to have to spend to have your own server is going to go. Whoa, okay, I guess I'll do that. Yeah. So um, it's pretty inexpensive, and you get a free domain name with it, so you can actually have your own domain name. It's not it's not agentmastermind.wordpress.com. It's your it's agentmastermind.com. So. Just so you know, Agent Mastermind, the actual 
WordPress.com is set up uh, on a blog. All the stuff we do is set up on WordPress. It is amazing what you can do on that thing. And we're not even going to touch on the like the really, really, really techy stuff, but we're going to make it really super simple for you to add video, add content, add um, your listings, add your listing presentation, um, sign up to pages, other websites outside oh. of, I mean, whatever you want to do, Pinterest, social media sites, everything you want to do. So you are only cool. limited by your imagination on WordPress. Sure, that that is the sure. only limit you've got with it. So um, we will Excellent. see you right back here, same time, same place next week. Look forward to seeing okay. everybody. Scotty, thank you again, my friend. Thanks so much, man. Everybody, uh, whoever's going to be in Florida, I'm going to be in Florida next week, look, or t tonight, actually, uh, tomorrow here. for a couple of events down there. I'm going to be at the Board of Realtors in Florida. So if you're in Florida, look forward to seeing you there. And like, like you said, Paul, next week, same time, same place. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye. The organizer has ended the session, and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.